Hi friends, this is Zach. Uh, you know, you've probably heard me quite often talk about how much I love Hammond organs and how wonderful they are and how they're built to last forever and all that kind of stuff. And you may have heard that I've worked on them before. Um, but this all kind of happens behind closed doors until now. So I would like to share, for anyone who cares, um, my restoration process of my most recent Hammond acquisition. So I'm going to show that to you right now. This is a Hammond A102. It is considered by many to be the ugliest console Hammond ever built, and I tend to agree. These little flowy legs uh, are way too fragile looking for my liking. I like these organs to look solid and feel solid. Anyway, uh, the A100 series, of which this organ is a part, is basically uh, a B3 in a more compact case. Um, if I get to this side here, you will see that this organ is pretty shallow against the wall. Um, it's about four or five inches shallower than a B3. Uh, and in addition to having all the exact same innards of a B3, it has built-in reverb and built-in speakers underneath here. So with this slightly unattractive cabinet comes a really compact, really convenient organ. Um, and my goal is to restore it to its full functioning glory and uh, have it sound great. Now you may have noticed there are some Leslie speakers, sorry, Leslie switches right here. This organ came with a uh, model 251 Leslie, which is a, uh, a 147 with a built-in reverb channel. As you can see, the space for the reverb speakers right there. Okay, real quick, here is the back of the organ. Um, there's the reverb amp. There is the main amplifier. There's the AO28 preamp. Um, it's pretty clean back here, a little dusty. Um, those are tube covers that were on the tubes. I just had them off because I was putting the tubes back on. Um, it's pretty clean. As you can see, the generator is encased in this cover which I'll need to take off to oil it and then we'll see really how clean the innards of this thing are because this is the area that really is most sensitive to dust and all that kind of stuff so I'm gonna open that up we'll find out alright so there's our answer um, it literally has been 10 years more than 10 years since this organ was oiled um, but for those of you who are not familiar with the back of a Hammond organ um, this is the terminal strip where the power comes in and the power then gets routed to the various parts of the organ um, this cabling is going up to the power switch. This is the vibrato scanner back here. This is the vibrato line delay right here. And I'm very happy to see this, that these are the famous, yes, the famous uh, red capacitors. Um, this is the tone generator right here, this big box. This is where all of the individual tones are simultaneously generated inside a Hammond organ. There are 91, I believe, little wheels behind each of these magnets, and they are all constantly turning. Um, there's a big shaft here that runs the length of the organ, and it turns, and it turns all of these wheels. And that's how uh, it gets its tones. Um, what else do I want to say? Um, but anyway, um, as this is an old organ, um, these kinds of little components, the values can drift over time and they become unreliable and it starts to sound not like it was intended. Except around 1963, Hammond started to use these capacitors, which don't drift in value and maintain the original sound of the organ. And as you can see, the generator is just full of them. So that's good news. Uh, bad news is this organ definitely needs to be oiled. And uh, I will do that right now. Yeah, it's bone dry. See how the metal kind of shimmers um, right down at this part? That's not, you know, intentional. Um, those are steel parts coated in zinc, which they did to protect, protect them from rust and oxidation. And over time, what they couldn't have known then is that this zinc coating tends to migrate and form itself into little uh, fuzzy things. And you can see it over here, too. And when these parts are really close together, like, like inside the amp, like inside the 
uh, vibrato scanner, they can create unintended circuits and connections that short out other parts of the organ. You can really see it right here. See how it just sparkles and shimmers? That was supposed to be here if I, if I wipe it. There, now it's smooth metal again. But there's these little whiskers on my finger, see? Not deadly, not going to hurt you, but definitely has the potential to short out parts of the organ. Now, real quickly, you'll see that the generator is right up against the back of the organ, which is how they made this so shallow. Usually, this preamp down here, which is, you know, five inches deep or so, sits right here in front of, or behind, the uh, generator in like a B3 or a C3. So that's how they make this so narrow, which is so great. Um, so I've just oiled the organ, and I'm going to shift the bus bars, and I'm going to clean all the tube sockets right now, and then I'll be back. Okay, this organ just has incredibly dirty key contacts, and I don't know why, because um, it looks pretty clean, but I've got one drawbar pulled out on this, front, on this top keyboard here, and watch. Here, I'll turn that off. So, some notes appear to be missing, but if I work it, there it is, there it is. So, I'm just going to clean these keyboards, uh, but sounds good, looks good. That is not what that preset is supposed to sound like. Anyway, I'll keep working on this.